The seat thinks Cupra is doing a hotter formanter, thanks to numerous sightings of a camouflaged prototype that sounds an awful lot like it's packing the turbocharged inline 5 from the Audi RS3 at all. So if you want a more powerful formanter than the existing 306 brake horsepower flagship, you have a choice. Either put your plans on hold and cross your fingers the five-pot car eventually becomes a production reality, or get an existing formanter and give about a ring. The German tuner has just announced a new power ECU that takes the SUV's familiar VW Group 2.0-liter turbocharged four-cylinder motor from 306 brake horsepower and 295 pounds-feet to 365 brake horsepower and 332 pounds-foot it cuts the 0 to 62 miles per hour time from 4.9 to 4.6 seconds, which about points out isn't a million miles off a Porsche Boxster GTS with a manual box. It's not often that I get handed a long-term test car that resolves into a proper conundrum. Generally, you come away after 5 or 6 months and 10k miles with a very strong idea what you think, and I tend to base the concept of success or failure on two things, one, does the car deliver on what the manufacturer says it's supposed to, and two, whether or not I'd actually spend my own money on one. With full disclosure, I'm not a huge fan of mid, full-size SUVs as opposed to something a bit leaner, simply because most of them are used for simple stuff that could easily be accomplished in a smaller hatchback. If something genuinely excites you then absolutely fair enough, and if that space and AWD is used then there's genuinely no issue, but I fear the temptation to go for something extra chunky as a default is a bit of inglorious overkill in most cases. The Q Performanter seems to span a few different genres though, so it's an interesting car that seemed like it might meet my needs. It's also the first bespoke model from the brand, and so it was interesting to see where Cupra can carve itself out a niche under the VW Megacorp umbrella. Based on the small MPV platform of the Cita Tecca, it's actually pretty big inside, but with a more tall riding, hatchy Y profile. There's all-wheel drive and DSG, 300 plus bhp and a decent slug of torque, courtesy of a similar 2.0-litre four-pot petrol that does sterling work in the VW Golf R. It's all a bespoke model, with some really lovely details and a slightly grumpy look that makes it stand out. All good stuff. I was SOSO about it at first, much more keen by the end, simply because it proved versatile and spacious. With a roof rack dropped on top, it coped with five up and dog camping, and the dog appreciated the space in the boot. Albeit he's not a very big dog. A roomy set of back seats helped when stuffing three gangly teens in there, too. The footprint is relatively modest given the interior space on offer, which means it never feels too big to park, and generally I have enjoyed the practicality. To drive, it impresses, but never quite stuns, not lollopy enough to be genuinely soft and cosseting, but never sharp enough to be a pin-sharp weapon for a smooth road, it has proved itself to be a bit of a jack-of-all-trades, dealing out competence rather than genuine fizz. Saying that, it's fast and composed, chuck it down a back road and you'll likely be going a far bit faster than you think. It's 7 or 8 out of 10 on pretty much everything, and that's good. But it never really made me want it. The fuel economy never really reached any kind of dizzy heights of efficiency, even on a decent run. You have to be feather-footed to get the best out of it, and nobody really drives that consciously in real life. And I can't do any sort of summing up without mentioning the travails with the multimedia touchscreen. It failed, it froze, it was slow and unresponsive. When it blanked, it took with it so many systems the car became all but undrivable, which you could fix by getting out and locking the car and rebooting the system, but still. A visit back to HQ made it slightly more keen to actually react when touched, but that didn't help with the confusing and overly complicated UX user experience, and to be honest, it might well be a deal breaker for me. On top of that, having to disconnect the lane keep assist function every time I got into the car, it simply doesn't work properly where I drive 80% of the time, swerving into cyclists and parked cars and verges, the helpful eco tips that flash up in the binnacle, and a touchscreen that does big, flashy menu changes at random points, very distracting, I wonder how VW as a group could have got this system so wrong. You do get more used to it as time goes on, but for me, a sign of good product design is intuitive and comforting use. And this isn't it. So that leads us back to the original thoughts. And yes, I think this is a genuinely good starting point for the Cupra brand, and does deliver on what the marketing blurb says. It's distinctive, useful, interesting. 
a little bit of tweaking and it would satisfy a brand sweep of consumers and do so with style. I actually think I'd prefer the plug-in hybrid version, fun to drive, weirdly, and I have home charging, with the extra miles per gallon, but generally this is a very nice car, if it's on your company car list, it would be well worth a look. But when it comes down to it, I think I'd need a car that hit me in the heart a little more if I were to stump up my own cash, and the Formenter, progressive and complete as it is, isn't that car. Formenters were not common when mine arrived six months ago, but I've seen a few now, and they actually look nicely distinctive out in the real world. Props to the lady in the PHEV version near the M6 services singing her heart out to Dolly Parton. In fact, not very many are my 310 brake horsepower VZ, usually something more economical like the lady working 9 to 5. Seems like those hot hatch buyers are still headed the Golf RS way. Still, it's nice to see them out and about, and I've had a noticeable uptick in people asking what it's like, rather than what it is. There appear to be some really positive lease deals knocking about on these Cupras at the moment, and that will certainly have helped the car's visibility. If you're in the market, it's definitely one to look at.